Alright, here we are, episode 2. Um, I didn't realise episode 1 uh, actually ended up so long. can't believe that took me half an hour just to complete the first quest. <laughs> uh, there you go. Alright, so uh, we've completed our first assassin quest, got a few skills. Um, and we are ready to speak to uh, our set, the second person. Um, a man called Panaku, who seems a little bit insane. He, uh, he just loves to kill, really. Um, so maybe that's your thing? <laughs> if it is, then yeah, we'll be perfect being an assassin. So we're gonna speak to him. I quickly came back here because I want some more uh, heroes, uh, some more henchmen. Uh, but I just quickly on our way out, I wanted to speak to this person uh, called Yazo Ying. She says, "All my life, hold on, there we go. All my life, I have hoped to become a great ritualist, but I'm afraid the newcomer Yizhou Tan already outshines us all. He must be very gifted. I've heard that Master Togo himself is personally training Yizhou." The rest of us have to complete all the challenges our headmaster and other instructors set before we are even given an audience with Master Togo. So, uh, Master Togo is a ritualist as well, and um, so yeah, we can already see that he's taken a shining to Yijo, who was one of the students we were with uh, when we started. Uh, the other one was Taya, who this healer who came out with us on our first quest. I'm going to add her again. Um, but we can also have two more people in our party this time. So let's decide what we want. Each one's a different profession. Uh, let's speak to this guy. He's called Aeson. Hello, Aeson. He says, invite me to go with you and you won't be sorry. My strength of will is second to none. So he says, I'm Aeson of the Crab Armada. I'm something of a rarity among my people. I was born blind, you see. Normally, I would have been left out on the jade, given to the sea. However, Master Togo convinced my father that I had rare gifts, that I could display my strength by bringing, by binding spirits to my will. I owe the Master a great debt. Did you need something? Okay, so he's uh, he's from the Jade Sea. Uh, we're not quite sure what that is yet, but um, he's blind. And uh, in this game, all of the ritualists are actually blind. All of their uh, headgear uh, always covers their face like that, uh, which is quite a cool little trait, I think. Um, yeah, and uh, so that guy's from the Jade Sea. Uh, let's speak to this guy called Lucas. He's a warrior, like we were in the last series. He says, My name is Lucas of House Vasberg. You seem like a pretty good sort. Why don't you make sure to stay close to me and you'll learn what it takes to become a legend? That's right, I don't intend to be a mere hero, but truly legendary. Epic, you might say. The crux of the matter, of course, is not just accomplishing your goals, but accomplishing them in true style. I will become the greatest of artists and the battlefield will be my canvas. Now what is it you wanted? So <laughs> that guy uh, likes to do things in style. This was one of the other people who um, started with us of course uh, in the beginning tutorial area. And he says he's from some place called House of Vassberg. Um So yeah. Alright so now we've got our full party. Uh, let's go find Panaku to continue our training. Uh, like I said in the last episode we're going across the mountains. Um, those mountains way out over there uh, because we're going to a different explorable area, the one called Kenya Province. Um, so yeah, I will speed it up. Uh, if you've not watched the previous series, you won't be familiar with this. Uh, basically, um, I'm just going to slow it all down and uh, speed it all up and not talk. Um, but if I do talk, I'll be recording that after I filmed it. So yeah, I'll see you when we get to the base of the mountains. Ah, so this is uh, one of the Kappa that we heard about earlier that we were warned about. Um, these are other really uh, low level things, kind of like turtle things really, aren't they? Um, who won't attack us unless we attack them. Uh, but you see some more power powerful versions of those. They're mostly just, I don't think they're very interesting, they're just really creatures that sort of live around in Kampha. They're native to Kampha. So uh, just before we go up into the mountains, you can see we're quite close now. Uh, I wanted to talk to this guy here. This guy's called Siung, Siung Kim. I'm not sure, <laughs> but basically he's a collector. And uh, in Guild Wars, all around the explorable areas and in uh, missions and outposts and stuff like that, you find collectors. And basically, they're just NPCs who uh, will take trophies that you get from killing enemies. And they'll make a trade with you, and you can get items off of them. Uh, and in the previous series, all of the collectors had nothing interesting to say. They'd just say, uh, I'm looking for this item and I can give you this, this or this. Uh, and that was the extent of it. But on this, every single in, in uh, factions, every single collector has something interesting to say. 
Uh, it would be pretty crazy for me to try and talk to all of them. Uh, so I'm just going to talk to a couple where I think they've got something cool to say. Um, and this is the first one, so yeah. Sa Young Kim. He says, during the Tengu Wars, we learned to respect the tenacity and honour of the Tengu. Now that the wars have ended, we have begun to accept our differences and coexist peacefully. So these are the wars that I, I referenced earlier, the Tengu Wars. Unfortunately, these savage Sensali Tengu are undoing all of our hard work. They have refused to put down their swords, and they continue to raid our settlements. Someone must put a stop to their attacks. Kill, kill some Sensali and bring me five of their scalps as proof of their demise, and I'll give you one of these. So we don't really want one of any of these items. These are just some weapons. Uh, he's got some daggers here, uh, which are quite cool, um, but I think we can get some better ones elsewhere. So I'm not going to bother with that, but yeah, he teaches us about the... Uh, the Tengu Wars, which is quite nice because the second we get into these mountains now, uh, we're going to be finding some Tengu who want us dead. We're getting, uh, basically, the Tengu are split into different tribes, um, and these Sensali Tengu, uh, they're from a tribe who doesn't want peace with the humans, uh, and they tend to be up in these mountains. You can see there's a Yeti there, um, and this is one of the Sensali, he's called a Sensali Assassin. I think they actually fight each other, uh, but... If they get oh okay he's seen us so yeah they just try and kill us straight away uh, we're gonna kill them so these are the Tengu that live in Kantha uh, if you've seen the previous series they would have been all over the uh, you would have seen them before they do live all over the world they're intelligent creatures uh, by that me by that I mean they can talk you know um, but yeah not all of them want peace however some of them do uh, they're a tribe called the Angchu Tengu uh, and they've got a small settlement here on Shingji Island and we'll be seeing more of those soon enough. You'll see that I uh, kind of ignored that Yeti there because the Yetis are quite strong. They're at, they're like level eight since we're at only level three, uh, and the people in our party are quite weak as well. I'd rather not go after them. They can probably kill us quite quickly. So here's another group of things that don't like us on the mountains. These are the Crimson Skull. These are the pirates, uh, a guild of uh, humans who are led by someone who used to work, at, um, used to be a student in the monastery. Basically, they're just bastards. Um, they're not too dangerous, but if I was trying to come here alone, that would have been three versus one. And, uh, well, I, th I don't need to tell you how that would have worked out, do I? Okay, so easy enough. You could see that some of them there had summoned a spirit. Uh, that's what the ritualists do. Uh, you can see what some of our allied spirits just over there. They're pretty cool. Okay, so the mountain chain here isn't too big. It does stretch off quite far to the east of the island. Uh, but while we're just here in western Xingji, um, it's not too bad. This is mostly the extent of it. Oh, where's my team going? What's happening? Teo, where are you going? What's... Oh no, why is she going over that bridge? Why is she going over the bridge? What the hell? Oh, some something attacked us up here in this building. Oh no, she was healing this guy. Brother Sitil. Sitai? Hello, I'm Brother Sitai and I attend the Shrine of Mart. You must be here to make an offering. I will leave you to it. Um, no, I'm not here to make an offering. I think he's to do with one of the Mesmer quests. Um, you're meant to heal him when, you, when you're a Mesmer. But I guess Taya, being a monk, decided that she wanted to do it herself. Stupid. Anyway, so let's keep going across the mountains, shall we? Okay, so here we go. We're now at another one of the portals. Um, this is... We're in the Sunkwa Vale at the moment, and this is the portal that will take us to the Kenya province. And we're through. So our trainer, Panaku, should be somewhere around here. Because, of course, we're getting further into the world. Things get a little bit more dangerous around here. Um, that there is a resurrection shrine. If we all die, uh, and all of our team dies, and no one can resurrect anyone, uh, we will respawn at one of these resurrection shrines. Um, and the resurrection shrines uh, do a little bit more than that in Canther. Um I'll explain more about that later though. Okay, so now it's 4v4. Let's do it. You can see they really do a lot of damage to me. That's because assassins, um, they fight on the front line, which means they, they take a lot of damage. Uh, but their armor isn't as strong as warriors, like Lucas here. So, um, basically, I have very low survivability. The only way I can really stay alive is by killing very quickly or uh, trying to use spells to keep myself alive. 
which we only have one at the moment, this one here called Shadow Refuge. Okay, pwned, awesome, let's go. Alright, so uh, I don't think I've explained about skill chains yet. Uh, assassins attack by chaining up their attack skills. Here you've got, this one here is called Unsuspecting Strike, which I've showed you before. Whoa, what's going on over there? Loads of <laughs> wow, it's the Crimson Skull and they're dancing and stuff. Look, that guy's playing the guitar. And that uh, that one at the end there is a, a boss. Okay, I'll ignore them. Alright, so we're in a little village now. Very nice little village. Yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, um, but you can see here that it says it's a lead attack. That's basically assassins have to use a lead attack before they can use an offhand attack. And um, there's also another type of attack after that, which you can only use if you've used an offhand attack. Uh, and that's called a dual attack, and Panaku's going to teach us about those, which is pretty cool. So there's some guards. So this is a village, but it's not an outpost on the map. Not all villages uh, you can map travel to, only certain ones. There's a peasant, more chickens, and a rooster this time. They say the Kappa are especially fond of cucumbers. If you're thinking about making the trek to Port Kaimu, think again. The Crimson Skull runs things up there these days. Alright. These guys always have interesting things to say. One night each year we celebrate the cherry trees coming into bloom by dancing and feasting until dawn. I really like the detail that they go into with the cultures and the stuff in this game. I mean, they obviously really do put a lot of thought into it. Okay, so here we are uh, coming out at the beach on the other side of the island. And here's Panaku. Yeah, you can already tell this guy's pretty crazy. Just look at those eyes. I like his armor, though. That's some pretty cool armor. All right, hello, Panaku. He says, so Jinzo has taught you the basics, has he? Well, if you are ready to get serious, you have come to the right place. Now the real fun begins. Okay. I imagine Jinzo spoke to you of duty and of balance. That is all well and good for him, but as for me, I do this for the thrill, the pleasure and the gold. Look into your victim's eyes as your blades steal away his life, and you can take his power, his essence, into your own. I remember everyone I've ever killed. They have become a part of me. They are my power. I will teach you to be a hunter. You, the spider, the mark, your prey. Now, listen carefully. I've been I have a paying job from some associates of mine. If you make the kill, I will split the profits with you. Headmaster Lee would not approve. But never mind that. Speak with me when you are ready to accept the task and learn your new skills. We will head into the village to finish this job afterward. Okay, so I'm ready to test my skills. This sounds a little out of my league. No, I'm ready to test it. Okay, so uh, we're about to try and kill someone uh, already, and headmaster, our headmaster uh, wouldn't approve. So yeah, now we've got our final skill, and this one here is called Twisting Fangs. Basically, uh, it's going to hit the enemy twice, and it's going to do loads of damage and make them bleed and stuff. So uh, we have to use Unsuspecting, and then Fox Fangs, and then Twisting Fangs. We have to do it in order. And the, uh, the, the chains and combos can get quite complicated and interesting later on in the game, but that's basically how it works. You've got a lead attack, an offhand attack and then a dual attack. So, assassins are the great hunters of the world. It is our duty to kill those in the web of evil, just as the spider bites, uh, just as the spider kills the fly. You will learn to revel in the kills as I do, to watch carefully as the soul flees the body and the animal fear in your victim's eyes turns to blank emptiness. I remember the eyes of every person I have ever killed. Okay, he says, are you finally ready? We will be lucky if our target has not died of old age by now. Come then, we need to get moving. Oh god, here we go. Oh wow, so look at the beach. So uh, one quite interesting thing about the landscapes in, in Canther are these kind of crazy looking huge rock pillars. Um, they're all over the place. They look pretty cool. They're really, obviously, you'd never get something like, well, you might. No, I'd, would you ever get something like that on Earth? If someone's seen so that kind of ha thing happen on Earth, uh, please tell me. Uh, this way your target is just ahead. But yeah, they're very cool. I like them. And you do find them all over the place. So, very interesting. Ah, so we're on the beach and the Naga are snakes who dwell in the water. Um, and here's our first look at the Naga. These were the other things we've been warned about. Again, you can see there were three of them. If I was alone, this would have been quite dangerous. Uh, they're pretty cool. Um, if you've seen the previous series, you might see a resemblance there to the Forgotten. Uh, 
They're not that related, but uh, they could be. I'll talk more about that later. Don't want to overflow everyone with information. All right, where are we? Come on, Panaku, where are we going? He says, Headmaster Lee would forbid you from performing any real work while still a student at the monastery. Though this is a part of what it means to be an assassin. This is our little secret. Oh dear. He's insane. Uh, my employer in this matter assures me that our target has committed a crime. Though I do not ask excessive questions. Wait, so this guy we're killing could be innocent. Lovely. I'm going to leave my... Uh, henchman here because this is meant to be a solo quest I think. There he is quickly. Ah it's a Tengu. He says I've been accept expecting you assassins. What I did I did for my family. I have no regrets. So we're gonna kill a Tengu. Um, and I was talking about the Tengu just now. Uh, these are the Tengu who we're actually at peace with. So <laughs> this is a <laughs> not exact probably not the best thing to be doing. So we're near uh, a village called the village of Airy. This is the Tengu settlement. And uh, this is oh no, I used the wrong skill accidentally. So you can see I'm about to use twisting fangs. He's already lost quite a lot of health. Come on, swift on a claw, boom. Okay, so now he's bleeding to death, and he's dead. Well, I got him. Yeah, so this is the village of Airy. Uh, I'm not going to go in there because we just killed one of them, uh, but we will be meeting the Tengu who live there uh, soon enough. Okay, Panaku, he's dead. The criminal, potential criminal, is dead. What are we going to do? You did it. Do you feel his life running through your veins? Here is your share, fair share of the gold. As I said before, I would appreciate your not mentioning the specifics of our lesson to Headmaster Lee. We do not want to be on the sharp side of her steel. There were no witnesses to our actions, so if word gets back to either Headmaster Lee or the Tengu, I'll know what happened, how it happened. I hope we have an understanding. Oh, brilliant. So now he's basically blackmailing me to be quiet. Great. Uh, you show promise, Tom. Unfortunately, I have some other business I must attend to at the moment. You should return to the monastery and meet with Master Togo in the Linnock cart yard, just off the main monastery proper. Use your map to travel there quickly. Okay, I'm on my way. Alright, so those are um, the very first assassin training quests complete. We've got ourselves quite a few skills. You can see we've got a full skill bar now. Uh, we also got this other skill here called Shroud of Distress, which is another one that uh, keeps us alive. So, let's look at our map. Go all the way back to Xingji. Obviously, we don't have to walk. You can just click. And we're going to go to the Linnock Courtyard, which is just up these really long steps up here. Uh, this is where we'll be able to find Master Togo. So, there's the courtyard. Let's keep going. So many steps. Okay, so this is it's, this is only a small little explorable area. Uh, I'll leave my people here. There's nothing to kill when we come up here. Okay, so here's Master Togo, and a, wow, a cool. Um, wait, is this a Nyan? There's a, a, a specific sort of. Um, uh, mythical creature that the uh, Canthans worship and they're called Nyans and I think that's one of them. So yeah, Master Togo and Yijo is here as well. So that woman was right, Yijo is getting personal training from Master Togo himself. He says, I sense a kindred spirit in you. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Yijo Tan and you are Tom Bluewood, are you not? I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. May the fortune smile upon you. May the fortune smile upon you too, my friend. Okay, so Master Togo. Headmaster Lee has told me great things about you, Tom. You have begun to learn the way of the assassin, but to reach your full potential, you must choose a second path. Speak with the other headmasters and learn what they have to teach you. When you are ready to make a final choice, come and speak to me again. Okay, wow, and we leveled up. Um, right, so basically in this game, uh, you don't just have one profession, you have a secondary profession as well. And you can use skills from your secondary profession, so that's kind of how you mix and match and decide how strong you are. Uh, you usually, when you accept your secondary profession, you can't change it for a while into the plot. Um, but we will be able to change it eventually, but whatever we decide to pick as our secondary profession is going to be quite important for these earlier parts of the game. So, let's run back out and speak to the headmasters. So as I said before, each profession has a headmaster. Um, we can just pick whichever one we want. 
Uh, now I have decided I want to show you guys two different ones because there's some quite important characters in this story um, and you meet those characters much earlier on if you do their professions um, wait what's going on? oh hold on <laughs> okay sorry about that we were meant to speak to Togo not go straight to the headmasters stupid me okay so he says welcome I understand from your headmaster that your studies are progressing well I am pleased right so yeah uh, as I was saying um, just depending on which headmaster you choose to speak to uh, you can meet some characters quite early so I'm gonna do warrior first and then after that we're gonna do ranger um, and I'll talk more about that in a little while so uh, if you are interested in taking the warrior profession as your secondary field of study then you will need to speak with headmaster Zan Zan was a general in the Tengu Wars you know when he returned with Talon Silverwing at his side, many shunned him, but I saw it as a testament to his character. He has served the monastery well, and he can teach you all you need to know about being a warrior. Seek him out in the Shinji Monastery. Okay, yes master. Will do. So he's talking about a character there. This is uh, the character who I wanted us to meet, called um, Talon Silverwing, who uh, is a Tengu. Um, so yeah, this is the main reason I want to do Warrior. I know the last series we saw Warrior, so this isn't going to be the profession I, I definitely want to choose. I will be picking Ranger. It was really hard to decide which ones of these I wanted to do because some of them have got some really interesting stuff going on with them. Uh, but yeah, uh, the, the problem with this is just at the start of every game there's so much stuff you can do, so much stuff you can talk about. I could spend like 10 episodes going over this before we've even done the first mission, so... It's hard to make the choices. Wow, I love that thing on his shoulder. I wish we could wear armor like that. That's so cool. Is that like a Tengu head? Is that what? I don't know what it is. Okay, Master Togo sent you, eh? Well, if you wish to study the ways of the warrior, you must be prepared to practice hard and take a beating. Or ten. You must learn to focus your anger and use it against your enemies. To wield a close-range weapon. To inspire your allies with your battle cries. This is not a decision to be taken lightly. To become a great warrior, or even a good one, you will need a vast amount of training. Each great journey, however, begins with just one step. To make your first step, seek out Talon Silverwing in the Sunkwa Vale. He's a great Tengu warrior, and there is much he can teach you. I will look for Talon. Okay, and we've got a couple of warrior skills there. I'm not going to use those, I'm going to stick with my assassin skills, uh, because this is literally just about meeting Talon. Um, in fact, I might not even do all of these warrior quests just to speed it up. Uh, in fact, let's call that episode there, hopefully. If it's uh, ran over, then I might uh, call it earlier. So, yeah, uh, we'll end that episode there, and then depending on how long this has all got already, uh, I'll decide whether we're going to do all of the warrior stuff or not, because I, I don't want to waste too much time. So, um, yeah, see you guys next time.